When we talk about a related rates problem, we're talking about a problem where we have kind of a complicated system where a number of different pieces of the system all depend on one another. And so their rates of change are going to be related and it's up to us to figure out exactly how those rates are related. Remember what we usually do is we have some kind of word problem. We draw a picture to get a better feel for what's going on. We take stock of what we know and what we want to know. And then usually in order to find out how exactly to relate what we know to what we want to know, we have to find first an equation that relates all of our relevant variables. And then we differentiate the equation implicitly with respect to the variable that we care about. So let's think about this problem. Ship A is three kilometers due east of ship B. Ship A is moving north while ship B is moving south. And what we care about is the distance between those two ships. So we have a picture something like this. I have these two ships and they're moving further and further apart, but they're not moving exactly directly apart. They're not moving apart in a way that would maximize how fast the distance between them is increasing. So I wanna know how fast the distance between them is increasing after one hour. So let's take stock of what we would like to know and what we do know. So if I take this quantity D to be the distance between my ship A and my ship B, then what I want to know is the change in distance relative to time. If I change my time a little, how fast is my distance moving when t is equal to one hour? Okay, now what do I know? I know how fast my ships are moving, which means I know the rate of change of their position. So let's let A be the position of boat A and B be the position of boat B. So what I know is that dA by dt is a steady five kilometers per hour, and dB by dt is a steady seven kilometers per hour. Now notice in this diagram, I'm talking about A and B as quantities, and both of them are increasing. So that's why our derivative should be positive. On a different setup, if I had if I wanted this position of B to be negative because it's somehow going down, then I would have to make it negative. But what I care about here is the quantities. I care about how big is this A and how big is this B. So the thing I want and the thing I know are both on this diagram, and so hopefully we can find, use this diagram to find a way of relating A and B. Now the, maybe the, the first most obvious thing to do would be to put in this line where A and B used to be. And we see we get two right triangles. And they're probably similar triangles, right? I can say that this angle is the same at this angle and I could go from there. But if you take a second to reflect, there's a much easier way. I can think of D as the hypotenuse of a large right triangle if I bring down this side like so. So now D is the hypotenuse of a right triangle where this horizontal line, well that's just the east-west distance between A and B, and that's three kilometers. And this north-south line, that's the, well that's A plus B, right? That's the north-south distance between A and B. Okay, so now I can relate my variables. I can say that D squared is equal to 3 squared plus a plus b squared. And notice all of, the, all of the units work out pretty nicely here. We have kilometers and hours. Nothing is in any other unit, so we don't have to worry too much about units. Now, the thing I want is the derivative. So I can differentiate both sides, but I need to do it implicitly with t as my variable, because t is what I care about. So I have to use the chain rule. If d were my variable, its derivative would be 2d, but it's not, so I chain rule. 3 squared is a constant, so it drops out. With a plus b squared, again, we can chain rule. If a plus b were my variable, my derivative would be 2a plus b, but it's not, so I have to multiply by the derivative of a plus b. And since t is my variable, that's dA by dt plus db by dt. 
Now what I want to solve for is this term here. So I need to figure out what my other terms are. I know dA and dB, so what I want to know is A, B, and D. But remember, we have one hour. So another thing we know is that A, well, if A has been moving due north at 5 kilometers per hour for one hour, A is 5 kilometers. Likewise, B is 7 kilometers. And we know how to relate A, B, and D. D is the, it's going to be the positive square root of 9 plus 5 plus 7 squared, which is the square root of 153. So now I can fill in these quantities. I get 2 times the square root of 153 times the thing I want is 2a plus b times dA plus dB. Note A and dA didn't have to be the same, but because we'd been moving for only one hour, they were. And now we can just solve for dD by dT. I can cross off these twos. 5 plus 7 is 12, so this is 144 divided by the square root of 153. And if you wanted to check that this was a reasonable answer, one thing you could say is that, well, if A and B, if, if the ships wanted to move away from each other as fast as possible, when they were due east and west of each other, they should have moved due east and due west. And even after they're no longer due east and due west, after they're in this position, if they wanted to really move away from each other as fast as possible, they would go in that direction. But they're not. So one thing you can do to check that this is reasonable is to see that this should be strictly less than 5 plus 7, which is 12. And indeed it is, because 144 is 12 squared. So 144 divided by the square root of 144 would be 12, and this is less than 144 divided by the square root of 144. To sum up, what we usually do with these problems is we start with some physical system, we draw a picture to try and get a better feel for what's going on. We have to make up some variables, and these are suggested by the problems, but they also sometimes involve a little bit of creativity. And also it sometimes involves a little bit of creativity to make the picture and to make your paradigm and to, to bring it to a place where you can really relate your variables to each other in a way that you can deal with them. And usually the trick is find some way to make a right triangle or similar triangles, because we can do a lot with triangles. Then once we know what we want and what we know, we use our picture and our setup to find an equation that relates them. And then by implicitly differentiating that equation with the correct variable, we figure out how to relate the rate we want to the things that we know.